The secret is this uh, is this unique um, architecture that it's got that uh, just keeps finding new applications. I think it, you know it's, it's had this incredible endurance. This was uh, initially something that was created to um, improve the performance of a, a home computer, really, and it was in the Acon Archimedes back in 1987. But then there was a realization this can work for mobile, and, and I think what's so key to today and to the the next year's success. For arm is is can it work can it really build those meaningful market shares in data centers in automotive and so on the, the kind of thread that goes through it all is the architecture it has is it's high performance but I think it's the it's the low energy it's the power efficiency that really works it's the reason why when it was in that first Nokia handset in 97 98 suddenly you could carry them around you didn't need you know a huge bag to carry them around and similarly the data centers today um, they eating through so much energy, they need to do it more efficiently, mm -hmm. and that's where ARM can help. Well, looking at the business model of ARM, as our colleague Arjun just said, and its technology can be found in 99% of the smartphone market, which is pretty unique in that it's ubiquitous. It hasn't been beholden to any one customer. Can you give us a little bit of insight into that choice to go about um, selling their product in this way and making their product ubiquitous and the, the whole model around um, royalties and, and the way the business model works. So there's two aspects of the business model. They sell licenses. That's the um, that's your ticket to use um, to use this uh, architecture. And I call it a, so in simple terms a digital rule book. So thousands of instructions. How does the software instruct the hardware to work? And there's about four billion ways they can they, they um, can be configured. So the, the license is something they've sold to a thousand plus partners. Some of those are coming on the share register today, as you've already discussed. And then every time a product that uses one of Arm's blueprints is sold, they get a royalty, so 30 billion times a year, a thousand times a second, um, um, arm is being used. And in terms of serving everyone, well, they have become this Switzerland of semiconductors. And I think initially, um, they looked to sell to one company in each category. So they saw, well, how can we do something in mobile? They thought games consoles was a bigger opportunity than, than mobile. Uh, if you go back into into the 90s, and then over time, it became less about one in each category, and it wasn't what arm can do for you. It was kind of what you can do with ARM, mm. and they were incredibly clever at how they managed to, to, to sell that across. And by aggregating what they do across the whole industry, they can make that investment uh, you know, on, behalf, on behalf of everyone. It's so interesting. I, one of the things that really struck out to me is how ubiquitous it is in all of our smartphones. You, know, you hadn't really considered how much uh, how dependent we are on uh, ARM technology for so much of what we use in our day-to-day -day life. I, I wonder because this is also a history of ARM uh, as well. And if you go back, uh, there have been several partners. Um, it was obviously acquired by SoftBank in 2016. There was an attempted a sale to NVIDIA in 2020 that got aborted. How do you think ARM's fate could have been different if the NVIDIA acquisition had actually been successful? Well, it's interesting because the NVIDIA deal was announced, I think, three years ago yesterday. So this is a long, long journey right. that the, the company has been on. And actually, in those seven years of SoftBank ownership, the company has been looking to monetize, test the market, can it sell the asset for four years? So potentially, that's quite, that's quite unsettling. Look, I thought the NVIDIA um, acquisition was was problematic because if you are um, if if your whole business model is built on serving a thousand plus partners some of the biggest names in, in tech you know Apple uh, Tesla is there Amazon and so on Microsoft if, if you're sold into one of them then all the others were concerned that they would have to go further back in the queue and that's the con complaint they made to to the FTC and other regulators and um, I, I think in a way by that transaction not happening um, you know it has uh, preserved arm to see if it can make that next mm. growth jump. Mm. 